So you join me today on a Hyundai iLoad panel van. This will be similar to the uh, people carrier version. And uh, I'm just breaking loose the wheel bolts to get things going. We're going to be replacing the brake caliper in this video. Now these wheel bolts are, I believe, 19 mil, And you need a relatively thin socket to get in there on these wheels. Um, these wheels are not standard. So, I couldn't say exactly uh, what the standard wheels would be like. I'm sure there's plenty of room. So, I did have a little bit of trouble with this locking wheel nut. Um, there's quite a lot of corrosion in there. So, I'm trying to get it in there. You'll see it doesn't really seat properly. I did have a little bit of trouble with these. Locking wheel nuts in Ireland do cause quite a lot of problems because they get corroded or stuck in or over tightened. You'd, that's why I never really like to tighten them down with an impact gun. I might I might run them down, but I never tighten them, and I definitely don't loosen them. So there we go, success. Just apply some slow, even pressure. And then it comes right off. <clears throat> you can see that pinch weld to the right there, where someone's jacked up on it before and bent it in half. I always like to put my jack on the uh, inside, on the back of the subframe. It's a good place to lift it from. And then once the wheel's off the ground, you can finish removing the wheel. Sometimes they come off, sometimes they fight you a little bit. This one's been off not too long ago. As you can see, the brakes here are actually pretty new. So because the brakes here are new, there's a few things that uh, I skipped over, but if you were reusing old discs that had been on there for a while and pads, it would be a good opportunity to clean them up. So I'm just gonna pull up the bonnet here and then I'm just going to take off the cap to the reservoir, just in case if any fluid spills out, it'll give it somewhere to go. So now I'm going to begin winding back the caliper, or at least trying. You'll see here I like to pry on it and just try and push the pistons back in a little bit. But this caliper was stuck solid. I tried and tried. Now, I probably would have got a bigger bar, um, and that probably would have done it. But because we were reusing these, I didn't want to chip off the corner off the disc or damage the pads in any way. So I just left it. So I'm just going to soak down all the stuff that I'll be needing to remove. That would be the uh, slide pin bolts and then the caliper retaining bolts. You do want to aim carefully when you're doing the caliper, ret uh, the caliper bracket retaining bolts. Because you don't want to get any stuff on the disc. So you can see here, I'm just going to get this socket on there. This is if you were undoing the bracket, so I loosen these. But then I realised I didn't need to remove them because the pads were moving freely. At this stage I thought there was probably uh, two issues. Perhaps because of corrosion and stuff, I thought maybe the caliper had seized and the pads were frozen. Uh, but that turned out not to be the case. But in any case, these bolts here aren't too hard to remove. And then there's another one just underneath. I thought I'd leave in the footage just in case for you guys if you do need to remove these. Again with a breaker bar, makes light work of it. So now I'm going to pinch off the brake line. And what this does is it just stops the whole um, master cylinder draining of brake fluid once we undo this brake line. I believe that this was a 12 or a 13, uh, not very tight. Wind that the rest of the way. 
and then you see me just move that little bucket there you want to catch all the brake fluid if you do have a nice driveway this stuff will definitely stain it so now we're removing these which I believe were 14s or 15s these are the bolts that hold on there through the ears of the camper into the slide pins now once those are out usually it would fall that's why we undo the line first so we don't accidentally drop it on the line but this one here was stuck on there so I had to pry it off just getting in there with the screwdriver just work it off very slowly and gently again I'm trying not to damage anything in the process because we're going to reuse the brakes that are on there at the moment when calipers go extremely badly and the brakes get like red hot no matter how new they are you have to replace them anyway because they glaze over Whew. so that one there is off there you can see the rust makes it freeze it's not on the inside of the piston that matters it's actually on the outside uh, when you depress the piston if there's rust on the outside of the piston it rubs past the seal so just here, I'm just making sure that the pads move freely, which they move very freely, so I was happy with that. Uh, so it's just time to reassemble. If they didn't move freely, you'd have to take them out, clean them up, regrease them, put them back in. So just going to get these bolts started. You can see I'm leaving that little green cap just to stop any dirt from getting in the hydraulic system while we're fitting everything. So I'm just going to run these down but I'm not going to tighten them. You definitely don't want to tighten bolts this small with the big impact gun. Just snap something off. I'll just do that gently. And now it's time to fit the uh, brake line. So we'll remove our little plastic plug. What I like to do is just to stop you getting brake fluid all over the... Uh, back of your van or car or box or whatever this has to go back to the motor factors so in transit I just put it into the old caliper to stop any more brake fluid from leaking out and one thing that you must do is replace these little copper seals uh, you can always try and reuse them but I always like to put on new ones it being the braking system I don't really like to take any chances if I don't have to I have reused old ones in the past with no problem but I much prefer to put on new ones and have a kit uh, just for moments like this. So one washer goes on the back. And one washer goes on the front. And that's what seals it. So in the middle of the bolt that we're screwing in, there's a hole in it that allows fluid to pass through the bolt and then into the caliper to push out the piston when you put your foot down on the brake pedal. So just get that tightened down. So I'm talking this so I don't over crush the gaskets. Uh, this got torqued down to 20 newton meters. There we go. And then these uh, caliper uh, slide pin bolts get tightened down to 23 newton meters, which is not very tight, not as tight as you might think. There's one. And there's two. Now we can remove that, now that everything's tightened down. And now we'll remove the uh, rubber cover on the bleed nipple. This bleed nipple is an 11mm. So what I like to do is put a little piece of rubber hose on there to catch any of the fluid escaping and put it into the drain pan that we had earlier and then just open up the bleeder <clears throat> so I'm just gonna continuously pump the brake pedal for a while and just push a load of fluid through not really concerned about uh, bleeding it at this point we're just sort of trying to get some volume of fluid into the caliper and just get some of the air out so now that we've got some fluid in there, what we'll do is we'll just tighten that back up a touch. And now we'll pump it. And then wedge the pedal 
down against the seat and that will hold pressure on the piston. Now when we go back we'll crack open the bleeder just like so and then a load of fluid will come out and a load of air then we'll tighten it back up. I tend to usually do this about two or three times and I find that that does a really good job of uh, bleeding out the brakes. So once that's done, I just quickly went in there and tightened down those two backing bolts. And I'm just going to check them for tightness by hand. I don't really trust the impact gun. See, there you go, got a fair bit of extra spin on that one there. And then I do the same with the bottom one as well. So now it's just a case of straightening out the wheel again. And then removing what's left from underneath the vehicle and now we just put back on the wheel. Do this in stages, just get it tightened down a little bit. Now, because these are aftermarket wheels, I'm not 100% sure what the torque spec should be. Um, you can work it out using the thread pitch, length of the bolt, size of the sealing surface, and the uh, type of washer or conical part on the nut itself. However, I just my best guess is about 125 newton meters, possibly up to 130. I went with 125, and I've done some work on this van before, and that's what I've been tightening them down to, and they have stayed tight, which is good. So again, I always tighten down these locking wheel nuts by hand. And then just go around in a little star pattern. And I, I try not to uh, use my back for this. I just try to like pivot my body forward or just pull up with my arm only. You'd be surprised how easy you can tighten down uh, wheels. One of the things I see most is people really over tighten them because they're really worried about the, uh, the wheel coming off. But if you have a torque wrench and you follow the spec for it, just take it for a spin. Uh, and then after a while, you know, or if you feel uneasy, you can always recheck the torque. Well, that's it. Drop the bonnet. And then we take it for a test drive. After something like this, I always make sure the car drives like it's supposed to. And of course, I forgot the locking wheel nut. stuck on there so these jobs aren't too bad these have a um, twin pot caliper so there's two pots on it so sometimes you can find them a little bit more difficult to wind back in uh, but you can always use a rewind tool or you can get the brake pads in there and use a screwdriver to, press, to sort of push them apart uh, you do generally have to remove the caliper that's why I find the little screwdriver method the best pulling the caliper right in and trying to depress the piston as much as possible while it's still bolted on. So that's it now, just take it for a spin and just gently use the brakes, uh, bed it in nice and easily. You want to make sure you take it easy in case there's a problem. So I took that for about a two mile test drive I'd say, so not so far, but plenty enough to know if there was going to be a problem. And then that was that. Wheels back on, nice new caliper fitted, and another happy customer.